Hi guys, I'm Raul from Simply Learn and welcome to this video on how you can install Java on your Windows operating system. In this video, we'll be telling you how you can install Java and showing you a very simple Java program. So let's get started. So first off, let's go to Google and search for Java. Here, let's go to this link. And here you have a number of different options. Now, first off, we have Java SE 13.01, which is the latest release. But we are going to go for Java SE 8, which is the more commonly used one, which is used by most people around the world. So this is what we are going to use. So we select this and here we go down a bit. So to proceed, we need to accept the license agreement. We've accepted the license. So now we can download the software. So we have two options to choose from Windows X64 or X86. Now, if you have a Windows 10 operating system, it's highly likely that you have a 64 bit operating system. So you can select this option. Now, if you do have a 32 bit operating system, which is probably like Windows 7, you can select the X86 option as well. So now let's click on this. So you need to log in and all that we've already finished and we have the download already. So let's get it. So now this dialog box will pop up. Now we'll go to the next option here. Uh, we'll accept them the way they are. And now we'll wait for it to install. So now we need to select the destination where you want the install to happen. So now this is installed in the program files. We select this. If you want to change it, you can go to this option here. We don't want to change it. We'll just go from here to next. And now we wait for the installation to complete. So now the installation is complete. Now we don't need to look at any other next steps. We'll just stop and go to close. So now we need to provide an environment variable. So what is that used for? Now, if you have files or applications that have the .java extension, these help tell the computer that we need to run it using the Java program. So now let's create an environment variable. Go to start, go to control panel, and then we go to system and then this pops up. Now, before we select the environment variables, we need to find the path where we install Java. So I installed it in C drive here. So let's go there in C program files, Java. And here we have JDK and JRE. First, we select the JDK or the Java development kit. We select it and go into bin where all these files are present and where the Java file is present as well. So now we're going to copy this path. Now let's go back to environment variables and select path from here, which is right here. Now at the end of this, we'll add a semicolon and paste the path. Now, similarly, we'll do the same thing for JRE. So now we're going to do the same thing with JRE here, which is the Java run environment. So we'll go back, select JRE, go into bin and select the path from here. We add another semicolon and paste the path. We press OK and it's done. Press OK here as well. And now we're done. Now to check whether Java has been installed in your system, we need to go to the command prompt. Here we'll type the term Java C, which refers to the Java compiler. Now the output will show a number of different options you can choose from. This is an indication that Java has been successfully installed in your system. If the installation wasn't successful, the statement like Java C is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or batch file will be shown to you. So now that we've set up an environment of Java in our computer, let's see how we can code Java. For this, we'll need to use an IDE on which we can run the Java code. We will be using Eclipse IDE. Now there are several other IDEs like IntelliJ, NetBeans, Dr. Java, and so on. First off, we'll need to install Eclipse. So let's go to Google and search for Eclipse IDE. Go here, download, select this option. And now we'll just click on download. So I've already downloaded the exe file. So let's just go there. So then this shows up. So here you have a number of different options. Eclipse can be used for a number of different languages like Enterprise Java, C, C++, JavaScript, PHP, and so on. So we need it for Java developers. So we click this. So this has already determined where exactly the Java file is, which you can see here. It shows in the installation folder here. And now all we need to do is install. We need to accept the terms and conditions, which we'll just go through quickly. Accept now. And now the installation has started. We remember accepted licenses, accept it. This shows up. You can select remember accepted certificates, select these, accept selected. And there you go. The installation is complete. Now let's select launch. Now we need to set up the Eclipse IDs workspace, which you can change if you want. I'm just going to keep it at this. Now we select launch. And here you go. Here's the Eclipse IDE. Now let's have a look at how we can create a very simple Java program. So first we'll close the welcome tab. And here we have the package explorer. Now in case the package explorer isn't shown for you initially, you can go to windows, you can go to show view and select on package explorer. So now let's have a look at how we can create the program. First we go to file, click on new and select Java project. So here you need to input the project's name. I'm calling it proj1. Press next. 
and here you see the src file or the source file where all the source code is located we press finish and it's done if you click on this you can also see the source file now we need to click on source right click press new and create a new class here you need to name your class i'm calling it my class and finish now within this we need to create the main function which is public static void main here we'll write a simple statement now let's see if the program runs now we'll select the class on the basis of which we'll be running the code and there you go we have an output so this is the continuation of the statement in 726 for this video we'll be using eclipse as well as intellij as these are one of the most common and popular ides there are also other ides available like netbeans dr java bluej and so on now continue to this part the one on screen so now that we're done with this Let's have a look at how we can run a similarly simple program on IntelliJ, which is another IDE. Now we'll need to install it as well. So let's go to Google and search for IntelliJ. Let's go here, click on download. And here you have two options, which is the ultimate and the community. Now the community version is free, but has limitations. As you can see here, there are certain limitations for the open source version. However, we're going to take this free version and download it. Now I've already downloaded it, so we'll cancel this. And I'm going to run this one. We'll go to next, select this location. You can change it if you want by going to browse here. Go next. If you want, you can select any of these options. I'm going to select these associations because this basically means IntelliJ also supports these particular extensions. We select the desktop shortcut, go to next, and install. Now we'll be running IntelliJ. We'll not send the usage statistics. There you go. The IDE is now open. Now we'll click on create new project. We select Java. Now from here you can also select two of your additional frameworks if you want. Here you should also make sure that this option is selected. We have Java SE 1.8. Now if this isn't selected, you can drop down and select this option here. You can press next now. You need to make sure this box is checked. And now we're going to create a command line application. And we are going to create a command line application. Let's press next. You need to select a project name. Project one and finish so now we're going to create a very simple program how you can add two numbers so let's get started so now we're going to initialize the first variable assign it with the value of 10 then for the second one assign it with the value of 20. now we're going to write the code to add the two numbers sum equal to first plus second now that we're done with that let's print the output and there we go we're done now let's run this code and there we go the program is running successfully so this is how you code Java in Eclipse and IntelliJ. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.